And now it's time for Who Smarted? Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. Welcome aboard Who Smarted Airlines Flight 570 to Kalamazoo, Michigan. I've turned off the seatbelt sign as we're expecting a smooth flight. On behalf of me and First Officer, uh, uh, the trusty narrator, I I want to thank you for flying with us today. Psst. Hey, Smarty Pants, I'm here in the cockpit of a jumbo jet airliner with airline pilot Captain Sam Sorrington. Yeah, I think there's been a misunderstanding. When I said you could visit the cockpit, I meant as a spectator, not as a uh, uh, first officer. Yeah. I know, but watching isn't nearly as fun as helping fly the plane. Besides, I even bought a pilot's hat at my friend Hank's hat shop. Yes, yes, I see. Say, I I think the flight attendants are starting beverage service. Why don't you return to your seat and have a free soda? Nah, I'd much rather stay up here with you and be your co-pilot. But I already have a first officer. I'm right here. You're practically sitting on my lap. Fine, maybe we can take turns. You to take off, I can help land. Do you know anything about flying a plane? No, but that's what Who Smart is all about. Teaching and learning. Like, how do you become a commercial airline pilot? Who was the first pilot? What do you do if you have to go to the bathroom on a long flight? And how do you fly such a big plane? You expect to learn all that and how to fly a plane in a 15-minute episode. Okay, I didn't want to have to do this, but cut the plane sounds. Look, you and I both know we're not really flying in a plane. We're standing in a sound booth. You're an actor, and this is a podcast. Just go with it. Okay, cue the plane sounds. You know what, Trusty? I'd love to teach you all about being an airline pilot and have you fly the plane with me. Oh, boy. Fasten your safety belt, smarty pants. It's time for a high-flying whiff of science and history on... Who smarted? Who smarted? Who's smart? Is it you? Is it me? Is it science or history? Listen up, everyone. We make smarting lots of fun on Who's Smarted. Hey, Smarty Pants, if you love solving brain-teasing riddles, puzzles, and problems, have I got something fun for you. The Secret Order of Problem Solvers from the podcast Mysteries About True Histories is actively recruiting new members to help stop the troublemaking trolls. If you think you're up to the challenge and have what it takes to be a problem solver too, then check out our Riddles, Puzzles, and Problems. Riddles, Puzzles, and Problems are mini episodes that play in the same podcast feed as Mysteries About True Histories, with new episodes every Tuesday for you to play along with. That's double the adventure, fun, and problem solving each week with new episodes of Riddles, Puzzles, and Problems on Tuesday and Mysteries About True Histories on Thursdays. Just search Mysteries About True Histories on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Okay, Captain Sam, where should we begin? First things first, let us get our terminology out of the way. You're saying pilot and co-pilot, but if we're going to be proper, it's captain and first officer. You captain, me first officer. No, I'm the first officer. Fine, you are, for now. What may surprise you, trusty, and you too, smarty pants, is the first officer isn't just the captain's assistant. They're actually qualified to do the exact same tasks as the captain. Uh, Well, you're not, of course. But I am. But wait, if the captain and first officer can do the same stuff, why can't just one of them do it? Smarty pants, do you know? There are several reasons you want two qualified pilots flying the plane. Uh, First, you need two people in case anything unusual happens to the aircraft, uh, like a malfunction. What's that? Relax, it's just the espresso machine. The captain and first officer work as a team. Uh, For example, during a flight, the first officer might do the actual flying while the captain communicates with air traffic control. Or vice versa. It's really up to us. And by us, I mean me. Uh, Because even though we're a team, the captain is in charge, and the first officer takes orders from the captain. Aye, aye, captain. What should I do? Well, uh, before taking off, the first thing a captain and first officer do is review the flight release, and... And what? 
What do they review before taking off Smarty Pants? Is it A, the menu, B, the seatbelt sign, or C, the weather? The answer is C, the weather. But you also mentioned the flight release. What's that? It's a document specific to each individual flight that contains maintenance details about the aircraft, how much fuel is needed, the names of the crew, the route we're going to take, and what kind of weather we can expect. It's a very important document. Gotcha. Do you need me to look it over? No. We did it already. Cool, cool. Well, if you want an unqualified second opinion, I'm right here. We're good. The next step is a pre-flight inspection. Again, this is done before takeoff. What does that entail exactly? Taking a physical walk around the aircraft and making sure everything looks good. Gotcha. Say, smarty pants, true or false? If you have certain medical conditions, you cannot be a commercial airline pilot. The answer is true. The FAA, or Federal Aviation Administration, requires all aspiring pilots pass a medical exam. Some disqualifying things include having a pacemaker, certain nervous system conditions, or being completely colorblind. It's because the captain and first officer are responsible for the safety of everyone on board, so their own health has to be tipped up. Aside from passing a medical exam, there are other requirements that need to be met in order to become a commercial airline pilot. Ooh, smarty pants. Can you think of any? Let's find out. There's certifications you need. Uh, They vary slightly, depending on what part of the world you're in, but generally, the first step is to take flying lessons and first get a private pilot license on a single-engine aircraft. Oh, you mean a little plane? Yes, a little plane. You need to get 40 hours of flying time in, pass a written test, and ace your medical exam in order to get a commercial pilot certificate. And then you can fly a plane like this one? Nope. Next, you have to get a very important certification called a multi-engine rating, which allows you to fly any aircraft with more than one engine. I see. And how many engines does this bird have, Sam? This airplane has four engines. To fly a commercial airliner, you must have a multi-engine rating since most big commercial jets have four engines. But then you can fly one, right? Wrong. Once you've got all that, you need 1,500 hours of flying time. 1,500 hours? That's so much. Hey, Smarty Pants, if you flew for 1,500 straight hours without a break, how many days would you be flying for? Is it 50, 62 and a half, or 80 days? If you said 62 and a half days, you're right. Yikes. Captain Sam, that's over two months of flying. It sure is, trusty. Of course, you don't do it consecutively. It takes a while to get your 1,500 hours in, and most pilots earn those hours by teaching others how to fly. Wow, it takes a lot to become a pilot. Then again, I wouldn't want just anybody flying me around. Like you? Exactly, like me. Hey, okay, you got me. Say, who's the guy in that picture you have taped on the instrument panel? That's Tony Janis. I keep him in my cockpit for good luck. Hmm. Any ideas who Tony Janus was? Is he a relative, Captain Sam? No. Captain Janus was the first ever airline pilot. He flew the world's first ever scheduled commercial airline flight on January 1st, 1914. Whoa. Cool. Where did the flight go? From St. Petersburg, Florida to Tampa, Florida. Oh, aren't those cities like really close to each other? They sure are. The flight only took 23 minutes, and since it was the world's first scheduled commercial flight, it was also the first time an airline ticket was sold to the public. Oh, that's cool. How many did they sell? One. One? Yep. There was only one passenger aboard the first flight, the former mayor of St. Petersburg, Florida, Abram Feel. Mayor Feel won his plane ticket at an auction with a bid of $400 which was a lot of money in 1914. About 3,000 people gathered in St. Petersburg to watch the plane take off, and around another 3,000 watched it land in Tampa. Cool, cool. And what airline was that? Was it American, Delta, United? Probably not Air Alaska. The little airline that Tony Janis flew for was known as the St. Petersburg-Tampa Airboat Line. Oh, never heard of it. 
That's probably because after that inaugural flight, the airline only operated another few months before shutting down. A passenger ticket back then was $5, and if you wanted to transport anything across the bay, you had to pay another $5 per 100 pounds of cargo. Captain Janice transported everything from newspapers extra, extra. to musical instruments to whole hams. Ooh, whole hams. Say, that makes me wonder, how do pilots go to the bathroom during a flight? Can you go to the bathroom during a flight? What do you think, smarty pants? We'll have the answer right after this quick word from our sponsors. How would you like to give an affordable holiday gift that will actually transform someone's life in less than a month? This holiday season, give yourself or a loved one the gift of communication with Babbel, the revolutionary language learning app that gets you talking in just three weeks. Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons, crafted by over 200 language experts, fit seamlessly into your busy schedule. Look, I'll be honest, I am not great at learning new languages, but with Babbel, I was able to get ready for my trip to Germany in just weeks. Honestly, I learned more from Babbel in less than a month than I did from months and months and months of language lessons. Babbel is like having a personal language tutor in your pocket. Here's a special holiday deal for you, our listener. Right now, get up to 60% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash smarted. Get up to 60% off at babbel.com slash smarted, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash smarted. Rules and restrictions may apply. Hey there, smarty parents. Our show is being brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one website platform that will help you succeed online. As a content creator, I need a stunning website that truly represents my brand. That's where Squarespace's design intelligence comes in. By combining expert design with cutting-edge AI, you'll be able to build a beautiful, personalized website specifically tailored to your unique needs. But that's not all. Squarespace also lets you sell products, accept payments, and connect all your social media and multimedia accounts to your website in just a few clicks. Plus, with Squarespace payments, you can manage everything all in one place and offer popular payment options like Apple Pay and Afterpay. Whether you're selling merchandise, starting a blog, raising donations, or offering online courses, Squarespace provides all the tools you need to succeed. Head to squarespace.com slash smarted for a free trial and use code smarted to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Hey, smarty parents, I know the struggle of wanting to create the best future for the children in your life. That's why I'm thrilled to share my experience with IXL Learning. Recently, the eight-year-old child of one of our main Who Smarted writers started struggling with math. They tried everything and felt helpless. Then I told them about our partner, IXL, and it changed everything. IXL is an online learning program that covers math, language arts, science, and social studies from pre-K to 12th grade. What sets it apart is how it adapts to each child's needs. His daughter loves the positive feedback and fun challenges. And the best part? IXL's research-backed approach has made a world of difference in her confidence and her grades. It's like having a personal tutor, but at a fraction of the cost. A month of IXL costs less than one hour with a tutor, even before our Smarty Family 20% discount. Don't let your child fall behind. Join the millions of families benefiting from IXL. Visit IXL.com slash smarted and get 20% off your membership. That's IXL.com slash smarted for 20% off. Give your child the gift of learning with IXL. Now back to who's smarted. So what happens if you're on a long flight and suddenly you have to go, you know, to the bathroom? Again, that's another great reason why you always have two pilots. One can fly while the other uses the restroom, usually the one located right at the front of the plane. But we never like to have only one person alone in the cockpit. So during a bathroom break, a flight attendant joins the remaining pilot up front. Interesting. Okay, so now I need to know, how does the captain and first officer work together to actually fly the plane? Well, part of that is establishing who will be the pilot flying and who will be the pilot monitoring. 
The pilot flying does the actual flying, while the pilot monitoring communicates with air traffic control, monitors changing weather conditions, and makes sure everything is set for takeoff. Getting ready for takeoff happens quickly, efficiently, and is sort of like a choreographed dance. Of course, before taking off, a plane has to taxi to the runway. Oh, that's when the plane drives around like a huge car. Exactly. Believe it or not, it's actually one of the trickier tasks the captain and first officer have to perform, since there's a lot of other planes around us. Not to mention ground crew, airport vehicles, and the terminal itself. And if it's an airport we're unfamiliar with, we don't want to take a wrong turn and end up on a landing strip. Yikes! That would be bad. Oh, yeah. So the captain and first officer must communicate clearly. Copy that. Then what? Then we take off. We line the plane up with the center line on the runway, and the captain controls the throttles. Then there's the climb. When we're about a thousand feet above the airport, the flying pilot adjusts the pitch and continues picking up speed. And the whole time, the first officer is carefully monitoring all the numbers and ensuring everything is operating as planned. Takeoff and landing is when most of our work actually happens. Smarty pants, true or false, most of the actual flight is on autopilot, and the pilots just kind of sit there and hang out. The answer is kind of true. Whoa. Before we even get to cruising altitude, which is most of the flight, autopilot is engaged. However, although much of the cruising flight is automated, we don't just sit around. The captain and first officer are in constant communication with air control and are always monitoring fuel, pressure, and engine performance. As we fly over different countries or territories, we need to check in on the radio every single time we enter a new zone of airspace. Nice. And then all that's left is the landing. Well, first we begin our descent. Right. Smarty pants, true or false? Landing the airplane is the hardest part of an airline pilot's job. This is definitely true. Or at least this is definitely when the most manual work occurs. The captain and first officer must make sure the proper speed and altitude are maintained the entire time. Then we drop the wheels, decelerate, brake, and taxi to the gate. Oh, and now I've got a true or false question for you, trusty. Ooh, hit me with your question. Even though captains and first officers share all responsibilities and take turns with all the tasks, is it true or false? Some airports only allow the captain to do the actual landing, and never the first officer? Oh, what do you think, smarty pants? I'm going to say... true? True it is. Some airports have very short runways, or extremely steep descents, or difficult terrain, or unpredictable weather. They're known as captain-only airports. Wow. That's intense. Anyway, now that you've learned what we do, are you ready to take control of the plane and fly a bit? Uh... uh... (laughs) I'm kidding. Uh, Did you really think I was going to let a podcast narrator without a pilot's license fly a commercial airliner with 378 people on board? (laughs) No. And good. I'm leaving the flying to the highly qualified pros. I'll be back in seat 14F. I just hope I didn't miss the soda cart. A double smarty shout out to Kai and Zen in Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. We're so glad you'd rather smart along to who's smarted in the car instead of listening to songs on the radio. Besides, you can always sing along to our theme song. This episode, Airline Pilots, was written by Phil Joystick Jeremy and voiced by Captain Connor Quinn, Kim Ground Control Davis, and Jerry Colbert. Technical direction and sound design by Josh Landing Gear Han. Who Smarted is recorded and mixed at the Relic Room Studios. Our associate producer is Max Wrong Runway Kamaski. The theme song is by Brian Winshear Suarez, with lyrics written and performed by Adam Tex Davis. Who Smarted was created and produced by Adam Tex Davis and Jerry Goldberg. This has been an Atomic Entertainment production. <laughs>